Yeah, it seems it seems you know the spirit of modern is you do your thing, I do my thing. We don't we don't cross paths at all. I don't know. Interacting, rude. Yeah, the perfect deck has a fair bit of interaction, which makes it a little wow. Seth Mulligan that hand. Hmm. I'm team never Mulligan, but probably <laughs> incorrect. Yeah, I'm. Uh... I'd say I'm on team begrudgingly mulligan, where it's like, I know I have to mulligan, but I have to, like, I'm going to sit there a little bit and just, you know, be sad. Yeah. I think it's reasonable. I like Urza Saga a lot against this deck. I mean, I guess they do have a way to turn into an island, kind of just praying that they don't hit it. But it's, like, one of the ways you can get past all their counter magic. Yeah, and I think... Shadow Spear seems like a really important card. It's, like if you can't stop Island Walk from happening, you know, like you need some way to either punch through or offset it. Yeah. He has a turn Frogmite here. It's probably worth it. I mean, Frogmite is like the best synthesizer card because it's almost guaranteed your mana when you have synthesizer, but obviously there's no synthesizer in hand, so yeah, That's and there's good, a man. No third land, no synthesizer. So I, I like the I, I like putting it out there. Mm hmm. Pretty straightforward linear hands from both players. Not a lot of interaction. Just try and dump my hand on the board, see what happens. Yeah, I kind of think that this um, this Urza Saga might might be enough if it's just a, if it's just both players playing ever-growing series of things, the, the Saga might swing it. I guess we'll yeah, see. Yeah, for sure. It does have, what is it, Tide Shaper? The one that turns into an island? Like the big blowout card for Saga, but it's not in his hand right now. Right. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, that's that's going to be the big blowout one. The uh, deck hand, not so much. Oh, he's not playing the Saga here? Really, I feel like you'd want to get it down so you can start making contracts the next turn. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would love to to get it down, and and also the longer you wait on it, it's you know more time for Nikachu to find that I shaper. Well, mm -hmm. so one mana off from Sojourner's Companion doesn't really. Oh wow, maybe wow. he's tapped out to Psychic. Can foresee the tide shaper on top of his deck. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know if he wants to sandbag it for one turn. I mean, just play another lord. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, no knowing the context that Saffron has Saga, I mean, I would obviously you would want to sandbag it, but without that context, is is that the right play? Not sure. Well, he also it, just drew two new cards off Pot Monitor, so one of those two new cards could also be a Saga, which makes you might want to sandbag it more. Also a very good point. And, and I think getting out the Lord here makes a lot of sense as well to set up, like, I don't know, maybe a really nice next turn. Yeah, so just make a huge push. Just build a huge board and then huge push. You can also just play Thundering Falls and double spell next turn. Push yep. 10 damage, and then even if Saffron does have synthesizer, it shouldn't really matter too much. I think the hex catch catcher, I'm not sure. Does that is that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives your Merfolk sack counter unless they pay one. Yeah, that seems really strong if you're worried about one of the many three mana plays as well. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like he's just going for the straightforward play, which I like. And he wants to top land. Yeah, I was gonna say you probably would sequence the uh, top land first, get more information, unless you wanna upkeep tap, keep a moss synthesizer just in case. Yep. Makes a lot. That makes a lot of sense. And it is going to get rewarded for not playing the tide shaper. Mm -hmm. And possibly a little bit of a punishment for not playing the saga earlier. Although I guess it would have changed, would have changed the entire course of the game had that happened. Yeah, that's kind of a problem with affinity. Is it's like when you're not when you're on the synthesizer and play, the affinity creatures just don't really pack that big of a punch. There's no like master of Ethereum or any uh, board buff to really reward you. 
Yeah, it'd be, be really nice if, to, to have access to just to some of that kind of card. It is a little like it doesn't have the synergy with the synthesizer, but like even something like a plating here would be like huge. Mm -hmm. That's why I like, really like Nettle Sis. When I was like brewing some decks, I was trying out like blue white versions with Stone Forge because you could go turn Stone Forge, get Batter Skulls, and synthesizer put in Batter Skull, just like playing more of a grindy game. And then Portable Hole is also an artifact. I don't know, there might be something there, but I never played it that much. Just sort of weird ideas floating around my head. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, that, that I like that idea. You can, like, because it is just when it comes into play, you get to draw that card, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, you could put in Calder Complete and draw a card with Stoneforge or Batter Skull or... Yeah, my issue and with building that deck was it was just too many cards, because if you play Stoneforge, also I was wanting to play uh, Sword of the Meek. Then you can run top your combo, and then you're like, oh, I kind of want to fit in Urza. Oh, I'm playing a bunch of four mana cards. I might as well play Talisman of Progress and the One Ring. And I'm like, this is a 90 card deck. I can't. I need to pick a direction. Oh wow, went for okay. That's a that's interesting actually. I wouldn't have been on my radar, but does not turn the Saga into the Island, which maintains Island Walk. Yeah, I was trying to end the game ASAP, I guess. I think it's probably going to work. I think so as well. I mean, it's an 11, placed on lethal. Ottawa has already been played. I don't think there's anything in Seth's death that can actually remove an Island Walker or a Lord. I don't think I so, his, yeah. I think his only hope here is to draw a Shadow Spear, try and gain life, survive one more turn, but. Yeah. Yeah, this this looks like lethal and if it's if if somehow it's not, there's there's another lord in hand cuz the uh, the merfolk away. Yeah, this is kind of why I wanted to play the wandering in this deck. It's just there's so many different ways you can build a synthesizer deck. But the wandering kind of like it, for one it triggers synthesizer, but two it also can um kind of like give you that free turn while also trying to build a giant board. I'm not sure. There's like so many different directions you go with this deck. Definitely like the more all-in version. Yeah, yeah. That's that's in, like I, I agree. This it seems like there's like a million different ways you can go with it. I I feel like there's probably something that's there in one of the builds just because the card synthesizer itself seems like ridiculously powerful. Yeah. But it's it's about finding like what what is that build and. That's, you know, I honestly I have no idea myself. It's tough to yeah. say. I'll just keep checking, checking uh, MTGO results every day, hoping someone breaks it. It's yeah. Happen eventually, I feel like. I think so. That's that's generally how it works. It's like iteration. It's never, it's not like it's one person necessarily. It's the collective mind trying things out. Mm hmm. So I'm very surprised. You can immediately just board out spell pierces. I feel like spell pierces are kind of one of the better cards, but maybe it just feels like, oh, I already have a uh, text catcher and force negation, flame venor. I already have like a million ways of killing it. Maybe I don't need the spell pierce. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I mentioned that in the previous match as well, that I felt, I felt like spell pierce just because of how lopsided the deck is when it has a synthesizer draw versus not that spell mm -hmm. pierce to me felt like a, an important card. It might be awkward or kind of bad in a lot of games, but the time where you hit the synthesizer with it, I think makes it worth it. Yeah. It's like, if they're not casting synthesizer, you're kind of happy. Yeah. Is there anything that the, uh, artifact deck has access to that you think will dismember. meaningfully. What's he playing? Dismember? I didn't see. Let me check his deck list real quick. Uh, yeah, sadly, no dismember. He does have gemstone caverns, but he's on the place. So it doesn't really work out. Yeah, he's Orvar for creativity. I mean, counter spells, more rebukes aren't that great. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really anything here. The entire sideboard is kind of anti amulet, anti yog, which is. Neither of Nikachu's decks. Right. And that makes sense for like just the general format as a whole, because you're not mm -hmm. really you know, if you're if you're building your sideboard with Merfolk in mind for a modern tournament, 
unless you specifically unless it's like a small field or something it's probably not yeah like Nikachu Mulligan and Seth Mulligan to five. Uh oh. And this five is if he hits like a what does he need? Springleaf drum or something? Because I don't think there's any untapped blue artifacts. I guess he could just hit the Ottawara or Island, two islands. Yeah. I definitely needs help. Is Possibly a decent hand with some help, but it's gonna be tough. Ah. Except... <laughs> not, not what you want to see. So unfortunate. I'm gonna that say is... that uh, Nikachu's hand what didn't look very good either, but I think in situations where neither player is really doing anything, the side that's attacking with the creatures is. Oh yeah, got a lot of creatures in a vial. Yeah, not good creatures, but they are notably creatures that have power and toughness. Mm hmm Oh, man. Yeah, this is just a sad part of playing Affinity. Like, you require so many cards to hit a critical mass before you can start having broken turns that once you mulligan, unless the five cards you have are perfect, it's just kind of like, you don't really do too much. Right. Yeah, that's kind of always, yeah, like you were saying, it's kind of always been a huge flaw of, of like, affinity style decks and that's where i guess like the synthesizer card kind of fails a little bit because it needs that critical mass whereas sometimes cards like the i guess the normal stuff like cranial plating can be a little bit better because you know you can still plating up something on five cards <laughs> oh my gosh it's just the deck just teasing it's showing all the synthesizers but they're all in hand yeah, we were commenting on the last match that at one point in time you saw like all your synthesizers in a row. Oh yeah, yeah, Game. I had all four, and I was like, "Can you just uh, just give me a couple turns here?" Looks like a couple turns. Looks like the same thing is happening to Saffron, which is a little bit of cruel, cruel irony. Yeah, is this just already lethal with the Murfolk? It might be. Yeah, I think this might actually be lethal because. Kind of wild because that opening hand, I guess it really came together pretty well. All right. Well, quick match, but we all brought pretty aggressive ducks, so 